Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a tour of Fortnum & Mason's Christmas 2021 setup. I originally recorded most of these clips with sound, but the shop is on a busy street and it's a busy shop, so some of the sound wasn't great. Thus, I am recording voiceovers, so I hope if it's going in and out of this kind of sound and the sound from the actual shop, it's not too jarring for you. Fortnum's is such an iconic store all year round, but it's extra special at Christmas. And you all know how much I adore Christmas, so I decided rather than lumping it in with my London vlog, this store tour deserved to be a video all of its own. Starting with the outside windows, the windows above the shop front each year form an advent calendar with each window being numbered. And you can also see in the front there the iconic clock, which you'll see once we go inside, they reproduce in a Christmas tree decoration should you wish to take it home with you. Now, to go across the road, we won't spend too much time on the side windows. I'll give you a quick overview. Please excuse how reflective the sun is. But these windows are more about the Fortnum's hamper, which is obviously an iconic part of Christmas for so many people. And they are nicely dressed windows, but the windows at the front are more the installation windows that we want to see. So we'll just quickly skim through the side windows. This year, Fortnum's have collaborated with Matthew Bourne's production of the Nutcracker for some of their dressings. And you can see that in the baubles, which are bright, sweet light colours that go around the entrances. They have lights through them, which makes them really shiny and enticing, just like a bag of sweets. For anyone who isn't familiar with it, in the Nutcracker, Clara and the Nutcracker travel to the Land of Sweets to meet the Sugar Plum Fairy. I'm sure you're all familiar with the music at least, even if not the story. And then various food items within the Land of Sweets have a role. So there's a dance that, you know, is done by tea from China, one from coffee from Arabia, for example. So it's a really appropriate collaboration, both from the point of view of the content of the ballet, as well as the fact that seeing the Nutcracker is a Christmas tradition for so many people, myself included. I feel like last year is the only year I've ever not seen the Nutcracker at Christmas time. Also, ordering their Fortnum's hamper is a Christmas tradition for so many people, so it's a nice marrying of two really iconic parts of Christmas as well. Anyway, moving on from the side windows, let's head round to those iconic installation windows at the front. For 2021, Fortnum's are giving us various animals dreaming of their favourite Christmas moments. Starting with the badger window, the little poem is The badger curled up to forget her troubles and pined for pops, for fizz, for glorious bubbles. This is a sparkling champagne themed window of course with the badger down at the bottom dreaming of herself shooting around on popping champagne corks and having a little twirling dance number. Next to the badger we have the owl who is dreaming of some iconic Fortnum's tea. He is reading a book and it is not just any book, it is a copy of Fortnum's Time for Tea and his little poem quite aptly then is nodding off with his favourite story the owl dreamed an epic of tea time glory and in owl's window we see him racing down streams of tea being poured from the teapots in his little cup there are piles of books twirling and some oversized biscuits sugar lumps and tea strainers and it is just quite literally the dreamiest of tea times Going along, we have the hare, who is a veggie themed window. He is asleep and dreaming of parsnips and broccoli and cauliflower. I mean, each to their own. His little poem is, through forests of veg, the hare did leap. Don't forget the gravy, he murmured well asleep. And we do see him riding the gravy train there, as well as having a twirling dance number similar to the badgers. I love the hot air balloons in this window, but particularly that smaller one there with the garlic bulb as the balloon. 
I just think that is super, super adorable. It's a very, very cute window, this one. Moving on, we have the cheese and port window, which is, of course, dreamt up by the little mouse. Her little poem is warm and cosy, all tucked up in bed, this merry mouse dreams with Brie by her head. All very cute windows, but I'm quite partial to mice. I have those Soleti mouse lamps. Um, they're just some of my favourite things that I own. And I always think of Christmas mice as being from the Muppets Christmas Carol during the Scrooge song when I have that line about no cheeses for us mices. I do have a real fondness for mice and therefore I think this might be my favourite window. So she's punting down the river of port on some mini cheese boards using the cheese knife as her pole and I absolutely adore the way she pops out of the Stilton jar. I just think it is the cutest thing. She's looking out of the window of the cheese. It's all in all just very, very sweet. My adoration of the mouse aside, we next up have the hedgehog who is also very sweet and literally dreaming of sweets. Their poem is, in sugar slumber, the hedgehog's thoughts plunder into sweet treats and endless wonder. The hedgehog is fashioned, now I'm not sure if this is skis, since humans ski on their feet, so then naturally would hedgehogs ski on all fours, or is it like that she's fashioned the rungs of a sled and become a sled herself out of the candy canes? I'm not quite sure, what do we think, skiing or sledding? But whatever she's doing, she's doing it down some whirling sweets and it's a very, very cute window. Next up, we have the magpie window, and the little poem there is Dreaming magpie dreams of shiny things, glitter jewels, and diamond rings. This, to me, is probably the least effective of the windows. It says under the poem there to explore jewellery with the QR code. All of the little poems have a QR code that you can scan with your phone underneath and it'll take you to the section of the website. I do think Fortnum's jewellery, gifting and beauty sections are woefully underrated. They have a really nicely curated section of fashion and beauty and lifestyle bits as well as their food which they're obviously known for but they just have some lovely slightly more niche brands available on their other floors but I'm not really sure that this window makes it very obvious that it's a jewellery window. It's very glittery but you've got lots of Christmas baubles that are strings of what could be pearls or they could be you know how some people string those like sort of pearl like things around their tree. It could be those, there's like a shiny tea caddy, um, you know it's all very glittery and shiny but I think it could have used some oversized jewellery bits to make the theme a little clearer. Even the magpie, he's twirling and he's wearing a necklace but he's also got this sort of tinsel across his wingspan which is actually taking more of your attention than the necklace is um, because the necklace kind of blends into his chest so got the wreath in the basket there so I feel like this looks a little more like a Christmas decorations promo window than it does a jewellery promo window. It's a pudding pies and joyous things that Christmas robins most love to sing is the poem of the next window where the Christmas robin has their little Fortnum's ribbon eye mask on as they sleep and they are dreaming of overindulging themselves in brandy, mince pies and Christmas pudding. I really like all the little robins circling around the Christmas pudding and all in different poses with their wings and their feet. You know, some of them are standing, some of them are almost sitting. Um, I think that's just those little touches that keep it quite interesting. And then we have the twirling traditional sixpences that used to get baked into the Christmas pudding as a surprise for one lucky in inverted commas, person to break their teeth on, basically. And lastly, we have the squirrel window. So the squirrel's little poem says, Fruit, nuts and treats all squirreled away, swirl round his head when hitting the hay. There he is, swinging away on a little swing that he's fashioned from some nutcracking equipment. There's giant cinnamon sticks in the background, some Christmas clementines. If this window was made real, it would be like the smell of Christmas just come to life from one window. It's a really, really beautiful one. I love the colour scheme of this window. It's definitely one of my favourites. The mouse is my favourite, but I think this could be my second favourite. Now that we've gone through each of the window displays, it's time to head into the actual shop. The ground floor that you walk into has a lot of these beautiful fixtures to display products on and they've topped many of the tall ones off with these little Christmas trees such as you see here. They sort of twinkle over 
the heads of the sea of shoppers that are always on that ground floor. It's always manically busy. Obviously, everyone just walks in and stops right there. Even if you walk in and it seems absolutely mad, honestly, just go off to another floor and it's much more manageable. Anyway, directly to the right of this first hall fixture by the door is a stand of gift boxing chocolates, which aren't Christmas themed. They have them all year round, but they are beautiful gifts. The insides of the boxes are absolutely stunning. We always keep them in our house and repurpose them for other things because they are far too beautiful to just throw away. And behind the fixture of the gift boxes, there are these little library bars of chocolate. So they're themed to be like little books. Each has a title and a cover. These are all around £7, so they're a nice treat without going to a really high price point, and they all have these beautiful, magical names. I had seen a Christmas one online, but there didn't seem to be any in stock here, so I will insert a picture of it so that you guys can see it. It looks lovely, it sounds lovely. They are still available to order online. I didn't even find it on the Christmas floor when I was in store, but I very much will be throwing some into my hamper, even though I had had intentions of buying it in store. Off to the far right of the shop are some of the sweet counters. These are where you can make up little gift boxes of individual truffles or chocolates or whatever and these are things that you can't really get online whereas the tea and the biscuits and the sort of package things they're all available online for the most part for making up your hamper with. I got some macarons on my last trip but they did not survive the journey home so I would be mindful of that if you're looking to get gifts. The white labels show what's available all year round and the red labels are the Christmas items. So you can see milk chocolate gingerbread puddings, praline Santas in white milk and dark chocolate, dark chocolate figgy pudding, Christmas figures, bears and angels in various chocolate offerings. All of these would be gorgeous little gifts to take home to people or to keep for yourself. Either way. Moving into the shop, above the sweet counter, you can see that the Nutcracker theming has appeared again and this is the tie-in for the Sweetie Land offerings. Again, this counter sells bits and pieces that aren't available online, so things like sugar mice and other traditional sweets, fudge, Turkish delight, and you can get things like fudge and Turkish delight online, but they're in sort of pre-made up boxes. At this counter, you can just pick exactly what amount that you want. The sort of main Sweetie Land tie-in items here are a chocolate Santa. I feel like Santa looks a little bit angry, not gonna lie. I'm not sure he's the most sort of jolly looking Father Christmas I've ever seen. Um, and a chocolate soldier or nutcracker, which are both $14.95. And a chocolate tree with hazelnuts, which is $18.95. The tree looks amazing. There's also a hot chocolate bauble at $5.95, which I for some reason had decided was online. I just made that up. Um, so I didn't buy it and I'm absolutely gutted because I thought I'd just throw a few in my festive hamper order and they are not online. So if you are in the Fordham and Mason shop and you fancy one of these baubles, just grab it whilst you're there. Hope that there are some left for when Lauren and I go back after Christmas. I just wanted to share, I made a few purchases from the Sweetie counter. Even if you're not buying like the pre-packaged boxes of sweets, this is how the ones from like the individual counter come wrapped. They're still in cellophane, they've still got Fortnum and Mason ribbons on them and they're a little more affordable because you can basically just pick what you want to spend. So my two sugar mice were £1.90, so super affordable. And then I got four bits of the marshmallows uh, which was £5.20 so I got the gingerbread one obviously to try it for Christmas, a vanilla one, a strawberry one and a raspberry and champagne one so that's what it looks like when you get it from that little counter so it's still really nicely presented um, and it just means you can maybe spend a little less than if you buy the boxes of chocolate. From the sweetie counter I went across to the main stairs to look at this year's decorative installation which is colour changing stars. They're not quite as big or impactful as some of the things that have filled the stairs in the past but they're very very pretty and I actually very much enjoyed them.
the teas and coffees etc on the other side of the ground floor that you walk in weren't particularly Christmassy so I decided to head up to floor number one which is where the Christmas food was all grouped together. I knew this was going to be a long video so I didn't want to fill it with showing you things that you can get all year round and I wanted to try and keep it Christmas focused. I walked up the steps on the right hand side of the store, that's the ones that lead up from the side entrance. So I actually came out just into this beautiful sort of tablescape section. Fortnum's is known for its own tea sets that it sells, but most of what was displayed on the sort of Christmas side of the floor was from Spode. So they had Spode glassware and dishes, as well as these super cute napkins embroidered with robins, Christmas puddings and nutcracker soldiers. I am about to switch to a few clips of actual video sound just to prove to you guys I did take sound on all of these clips. Super cute cookies for Santa plate. It's very sweet. This is how your table would look completely set with this range. It's like it's very traditional, very, very Christmassy. But you, you would need to be quite into the traditional look, which I personally am, but I, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea and it is quite a lot to have going on at every place setting but it is very nice. I was very excited to see these Babel candles in person. I've been following the brand on Instagram for a while and they are such pretty little things for your tables. I'm not sure I would ever burn them. I feel like hand painted candles are something I would just keep and gather dust with but they are super, super pretty. They would just feel too special to burn. I loved Fortnum's actual decorations of the store in this floor. They have these beautiful, rich, traditionally decorated Christmas trees dotted around the place. They also have canvases of their old Christmas catalogue covers from through the years on the walls. I absolutely love vintage magazines and adverts, so this pleases me greatly to imagine just what was going on in the world at the time and imagine what people who were shopping in the store or through the catalogues were, were thinking about, what was going on in their lives, what were they doing, what were they wearing. Imagining a woman in a 1950s dress thumbing through her kitchen table planning for her family or a girl in a 1960s beehive planning her first Christmas dinner that she's cooked alone. But they go right back to like the 30s, there's the war years, it's there's so many and yeah, I could have spent a very happy hour or so just taking in all the different canvases that were displayed. I like this one, Christmas 1958, the cat a If you can see down at the bottom, then it's like a little cat Father Christmas. Father Catmas. So I think I showed you the other Christmas bag upstairs but you've also got the red one that comes out at Christmas and they are really for life. You bring them in when well worn and they will replace with a new one. This is the tub for the Christmas green tea. So you could obviously keep this tin once you're done and that is £12.50. I have seen these online, I'm definitely going to be ordering some of these milk chocolate covered malt malted cereal balls so I feel like they're probably a little bit like Maltesers um, and then there's a 
a shiny red one somewhere in the packet because it's it's reindeer noses. And then I think these are super cute. So they do quite a few different ones of these. There's like the Prince Charming ones that are frogs, um, little ladybird ones, but they're like little matchboxes. Um, so obviously for Christmas we'll get a gingerbread one and these are only 6 50 so they're kind of stocking fillery prices. And then he is nestled in his little box. So I think they're just pleasing little packages, the little matchboxes that they do. Then we've got some Christmas crackers in the traditional Fortnum's colours. I think that kind of mirrors one of the, the china patterns, doesn't it? Some little mini ones. I wonder what's in the mini ones. So these are £15 and you just get a joke and a hat. I mean, to be fair, what does anyone ever do with presents? But yeah, just a joke and a hat in those ones. I've got the, the Rudolph from the, the malt balls that I showed you. Although somebody's ripped that packaging, which is not ideal. Oh, <laughs> look, you get Rudolph masks in this one. Very cute. In a Who Am I game. Then over here we have got some traditional mince pies. They come in different sizes of box. So they're $10.95 for the, the smaller one, um, which has 12 miniature mince pies in it. Then six standard ones are $12.95. We've also got almond topped mince pies, they're the same price, $12.95. Um, for six standard ones. And then you've got a mince pie medley here. So you get one traditional, one almond tot, one chocolate and pistachio, and one hazelnut and caramel. Cute, very cute. And then you've got the Christmas design on the famous Fortnum's carousel. So the normal ones are on that stand over there, and they play the theme from. Carousel, if you know the Rodgers and Hammerstein musical, £15 and you get to keep the tin and it's, I think that's such a good, a good little present. I've got the Tea Lovers Advent Calendar. I like tea but I don't know if I like it enough to, to want a tea advent calendar. My friend Lindsay would probably very much enjoy that. And we've got this little advent calendar here with mini caddies. Then there's a chocolate one. That's probably more up my street. But this is really good. Christmas confectionery refill, so if you bought the refillable calendar, you can just get a new chocolate each year and reuse it, which is obviously more environmentally friendly. Then you've got reindeer treats, which are like gummy sweets, but it actually says here that they are vegan, so Christmas reindeer treats, tweets? Christmas reindeer treats, vegan carrot sweets, six ninety five. There's Boxing Day pickle. $4.95. Christmas Fiddy Mustard $4.95. Christmas Mint Sweet in the Pantry Jars $10.95. Cranberry Sauce in the Pantry Jars $12.95. And obviously you could keep the jars at the end. You have Panatone. In this box, $39.95 or a triple chocolate one, which is the same price. Pandoro, again the same price. £45 for the 8 inch Christmas fruit cake. Again, I don't really like Christmas fruit cake, it's the same as Christmas pudding. I don't really, don't really go for it, but I do like these. Oh, the biscuits are really pretty, aren't they? And they're a bit more affordable, it's only $29.95. Then you've got the smaller gift pack, is $16.95. It says Joy. To finish off with floor one, this is where the ice cream parlour is. And the nutcracker theming is in play here too. They even have a special nutcracker menu. So if you wish, you can pause the video if you want to have a read of it. Now, moving on to floor two, I don't want to spend too much time in this floor because this video is already really long. Um, and the majority of this isn't Christmas related, but if you are into your beauty products or you're looking for a nice gift, Floor 2 in Fortnum's really shouldn't be overlooked, which it often is. 
Um, Fortnums have their own range, which was created with Lynn Harris of Miller Harris fame, but they carry some beautiful brands like Chantecaille, Slip, Fresh, Ortega, things that are just that little bit different, some really nice sort of traditional brands, some really beautiful sort of cult niche under the radar brands. As well as makeup and skincare, they also have a lovely range of brands in their perfume and fragrances. Their home selection is huge. Again, lots of brands that are nice to have gathered up in one place and some quite exclusive brands that you won't find in your average shop like Fornicetti and Roja, for example. On this floor, Fortnum's also have some fashion and lifestyle bits. There are hair accessories, jewellery, scarves, and your hind march bags and travel accessories. Desmond and Dempsey pyjamas, Elizabeth Scarlet bits, even some loner handbags, most famously known for being the supplier of handbags to the Queen. Some really nice, sort of well thought through, well curated brands. And my last tip for this floor is that there are bathrooms in Fortnum's on most floors, but generally the second floor, because it is so underrated, is quite quiet at the best of times. So the bathrooms here are usually without a queue and They've always been clean anytime I've had to use them, so if you're around the Piccadilly area and you need the loo, Fortnum's would be my recommendation. Okay guys, I've come up to floor three to look at Christmas decorations and you are not prepared for what I'm about to show you. Look, this is Cinderella carriage. This is so beautiful. It's not like it's roped off so you can go in it to get a photo, but obviously you could stand in front of it to get a photo. Um, but it's beautiful. love this deep green one and this is eight pounds so it's about the same price as John Lewis it's not particularly expensive this one is ten pounds so again kind of that John Lewis price range or take some reindeer home flight spotted baby deers 450 pounds and the spotted adult deer is 900. And Fortnum's do have their own decorations, so this is the, the classic tin that we were talking about earlier. The hot air balloon. Also a teapot. A little mini Fortnum and Mason hamper. A little afternoon tea for two on a tray. And we've got the clock from outside as well. And a tea caddy. The little teapot is 1995. Clock is 1995. Round is 1995, so they all kind of seem to be more or less around sort of 20 pounds price point. These little Christmas cards are cute. That could be Sansa at the front, my little ginger cat. Except she's not very friendly, so she probably wouldn't be in a sleep with anybody else. She'd want it all to herself. She's friendly to humans. She's just not friendly to other cats. I love that gift bag. That's very festive. The Swan Christmas card is also pleasing. Here we have wrapping paper. This is the Nutcracker one, obviously. Look at this dapper little chap.
coming down from the Christmas decorations to the bottom floor where the fresh food is. This floor was super busy and I had my suitcase and things with me because I filmed this the day that I arrived. So I didn't want to get too near the bottle section. So I didn't take too much down here, but you can see the Pantone displayed as well as the mince pies. So you kind of get to see what it is that you're getting. But to be honest, I didn't see anything much down here that we hadn't seen already. So I didn't stay down very long. What I did see though were these reusable cups in the Christmas pattern and next to them was this little tea timer which is an all year round item but it would be a nice gift to get someone to accompany some Fortnum's tea in a nice caddy or just someone who is a tea lover. It has three timers on it so Fortnum suggests brewing black tea for five minutes, white tea for three and green tea for two. And then there are three corresponding colours of sand in the timers. It's £25 so it's not cheap but if you have someone who really enjoys their different teas, I think it's something that that person would get a lot of use from. So it's probably a really good gift for the tea connoisseur in your life. This is the displays from the very bottom. It is actually very, very effective when you're standing under it, I have to say. Um, my initial sort of reservations have been proven baseless. So yeah. I think I'm going to head up the stairs to the floor of madness again. These are the tins that I showed you the decorations and the miniatures of upstairs. This stuff is excellent, balsamic jelly. I like to get that, get a bowl of mozzarella and like spread it on. I like the mozzarella is bread and that's the topping. It is a truly divine experience. And it's only six pounds, so it's quite an affordable sort of indulgence. And these as well, the pickled balsamic onions, I could very happily just sit and eat a jar of these as if they're a jar of sweets. They are so, so good. These are the other matchboxes that I was talking about. So you get Prince Charming, which is two little frogs. Then you've got the Midnight Feast, which is two very prickly chocolate hedgehogs. And that is what they look like. So they're covered in hundreds and thousands to give them their prickles. Anyway, the shop was getting a little bit mad at that point, so I decided to take my leave. I hope you've enjoyed watching this tour. I did try and keep it just to the Christmas stuff. I could have had the video easily three, four times as long as this, so I did try and condense it as much as possible. But let me know if you enjoyed it and if you like these kind of tour videos, what you'd like to see more of, what you're not as interested in. Totally open to feedback on it. I know the sound when I'm in the shop wasn't great. That was why I did most of it with voiceover. But if anyone has any recommendations for microphones for vlogging cameras, that would be great. My Canon doesn't take. It's a Canon G7X that I'm using for vlogging, which has no, you can't put a microphone into it kind of thing. So I am open to technology suggestions if anyone has any. But yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's got you into the festive spirit and I will see you in my next video. Bye.